So I'll say I used myself as a guinea pig. I said, no, I teach these people how to make money. Why don't I make money? So I have to make money so that it's a bit relevant. So that's why I started doing graphic design. Welcome back to Development Dynamics. You know, we say we host conversations and uh, reflections and stories of, of living legends, um, of captains of industry. And the one that we have today, the story is very interesting. I'm literally taking notes. There's, there's, there's a lot to hear and unpack from at a personal level, but also from a leadership level. And um, the age of this particular individual is also very amazing because it's a combined 35 years of, of, of concentrated um, experiences which propel him. And I think he would have as well been a 50 year old just by virtue of the experiences he's done. Um, so far, what we've, um, what we've covered post his high school is the kinds of programs that he managed to get into. And one particular one that stands out and connects uh, most of the threads is the Lepta community, where he participated in uh, the Estas program, where he helped set up and establish the Recreation Factory School of Arts, training um, different cohorts of, of, of students and a Get to Know It leadership program, uh, where there were 22 years, 22 individuals going through a, 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 a dedicated year-long program. And it's amazing just the kind of um, focus that he's had on personal development. Um, when he's talking about trainings, he trains on the skills of facilitates an environment where skills, skill transfer and skill training can happen, but also a lot of personal leadership, a lot of self-awareness and um, purpose unfolding. And, and um, he's also by the side become a, a renowned graphic designer that is producing and um, working on a, a number of things, managing, uh, managing a dance group and artists. And, and leadership programming is where we've ended up the conversation. And um, at this stage, your life has, you, you have now truly connected to to, to your purpose being to raise leaders. Exactly. Um, and not to raise <coughs> leaders first. It's not, um, in your opinion, are leaders born or are leaders made? In my opinion, mm -hmm. a leader is made. A leader is made. Yeah. Mm. Um, I will talk about choices also, because mm. uh, they have to make the right choice. Mm. The choice is I want to grow, mm. I want to become, mm -hmm. and I want to do. Mm. That's quite important in mm. terms of um, what they have to do on their own, mm. which now allows everyone else to play a key role in that particular process. Mm. Um, and so what we ended up doing mm. basically is after th these two cohorts, mm -hmm. basically in 2008, 2009, 2008, 2010, mm. after those graduations, mm -hmm. what we ended up doing is thinking, so we want to do like a program that is not even art related, mm -hmm. but we don't have a name yet. So mm -hmm. we're still calling it RF. Mm -hmm. Direction Factory, mm. uh, School of Art. Mm. But then I realized that throughout that whole year, we wanted to talk about the artistic message, artistic voice, all these things. Mm. But we ended up just talking about leadership, 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 and the different dynamics around leadership, around self-leadership, around leading others, around emotional intelligence, very many different topics mm. that help someone basically become a better leader mm -hmm. and live a purposeful life. Mm. And so we did that one whole year in 2011 and for me it was just thinking if i was to make this into a curriculum how mm. will it look like mm -hmm. so in as much as it, it looked like it was a trial and error mm. it, it has already gotten a bit more refinery it, mm. it had been refined a bit mm. so we we knew that these are all the topics that we train at lepta mm. but how can we make it into a one year mm. program that is condensed but also that gives people different experiences at different bits. Mm. So as we were doing the 2011 cohort, mm. we were also trying to define the classes and how they should look like. Mm. And if we have different sections. Mm. So I was really just primarily building a curriculum during that particular mm. year. Mm. And I ended up having a curriculum. Mm. And I also got a really nice name that just comes from leadership. Mm. So we call, we call it the LEAP program. Mm. And LEAP is basically leadership. It's not an acronym, it's nothing. Just oh. leap is leadership. 
Okay. Yeah, it's just. I was about to ask. So, what does the L stand for? No, no, no. <laughs> it's just leadership. Mm. Yeah. So it's a lead program. So it's about leadership. It's mm. about building leaders. Mm. And so we started that in 2012 mm. officially. So it's lead program. Like leap. Leap. But yes. So, sorry, this is me being <laughs> anal with, <laughs> mm. with, with words. So is yeah. it? Uh, the P is for program and the Lee is for leadership, no? No, actually, just leap, leap. for leadership. Why leap? It's like I was thinking about, I di- I, I'm teaching leadership. Mm. This, is, this is the whole essence of why I exist mm. and where I live mm. and what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't want to look for names that are mm. not as relevant yeah. to what I'm trying to do. Mm. So if someone asks me, I'll, I'll just tell them this is not an acronym, it's just a short name for leadership. Mm. Yeah, it's a shortening of leadership because mm. that's what I want to okay. do. That's what Makes I sense. want to focus on. Makes, and makes I don't sense. want to waste mm. any time with language. Mm. And I'm not very good with language. No, and I, no it's an amazing word. Yeah, it's yeah. an amazing the the, the 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 what's the word the nomenclature around this is perfect mm. i yeah. like it yeah and it makes sense for us completely it mm. gives us a purpose gives us passion mm. gives us a drive to do mm. exactly everything that we need to do mm. throughout the, the year-long process mm. Mm. so 2012 we started the program mm. and uh, we had like 22 people who joined the program mm-hmm. immediately mm. uh, we we used to have i would say we used to have a waiting list mm-hmm. But we still do have a waiting list mm. up until today. Mm. Uh, cause so you have a maximum capacity of... Yes. Mm. There are, we didn't have a lot of resources. Mm. Even the room that we, we currently use, ah, makes sense. which we've been using, we could only contain a certain number of people. Mm. And we used to just... Uh, um, our biggest uh, requirement for the youth who are coming through the program was you have to be committed. Mm. You cannot miss three mm. sessions. Mm. If you miss, you have to. Mm. Yeah, get out of the program because I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this for free mm. the only thing I want you to do mm. is to exactly. be present mm. if you're busy don't join mm. if you're dedicated mm. and busy mm. even better for you mm. because it means you are really learning and you're mm. you're basically paying the price to be mm. to be present because it was like three hours of like actual class mm. every single Saturday mm. morning mm. Yeah, mm. and uh, so the, what we did is with the first class we divided them into two. So we used to have a Thursday class and a Saturday class because mm. I just wanted to train ten people at a time, mm. and that's what we did mm. for that one year. Um, and so the Leap program is out of the curriculum that I was building, mm. and the curriculum is called ECS Leadership. Mm-hmm. ECS mm. E meaning elevate, C meaning cultivate, mm. and S meaning shift. Mm. And the idea is in the elevate process, we are focusing on self-awareness, mm. on building that personal strategic plan, mm. helping you basically elevate your perception and your thinking mm. and everything about you. Mm. And just moving from this place I don't know mm. to a place I know. Mm. And then cultivate is about w- what I know I want to do. Mm. So what do I need to know? Mm. What skills do I need mm. so that I can do what I need to, mm. to do? Mm. And then shift basically is about them joining now the curric- the, the alumni community. Mm. Mm. And this is a community of leaders mm. who have given their lives or give made a commitment mm. to start that transformational journey. Mm. They want to transform their lives, but those who want to transform the communities where they come from. Mm. That's mm. what shift is. Mm. So it's basically um, that um, alumni space that we have created within Lepta. Mm. So we can continue learning. Mm. So it's kind of a lifelong learning mm. journey mm. where we do a lot of mentorship mm. with our alumni. So they always know they have a home even after they have graduated from the program. Mm. They have a place where they can piggy bank on mm. ideas and all mm. that. Mm. Yeah. What's the alumni base as you speak? Currently within LEAP program, mm. um, now we have two programs. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. They, yeah, mm-hmm. that just focus on leadership. Mm. Um, the, it's the LEAP program, mm-hmm. and then there's a LEADS mm. program, mm. another acronym, mm. uh, another um, shortening of leadership, mm. <laughs> basically. Mm. So, so we're just differentiating them mm. because they, ha- they have different targets. Mm-hmm. So the LEAP program targets people who have just cleared high school, mm. so who, who are in that particular transitional year. Mm. And what we are trying to do is make sure that we, we basically build the right skills and mm. exposure and experience mm. Yeah, quite young. Mm. So they start making the right decisions going forward. Yep. So it acts as a, as a, like a, a bouncing pad mm. where they can start building their lives mm. from. Mm. But the leads program is that people who already have gone ahead mm. and they never got a chance to 
to do a transition mm. program basically mm. so they're in college then mm. they're already working mm. or some of them are in, are in university so we've done mm. programs of both mm. university students mm. or, or the working class mm. who are working in communities who are already kind of a bit more exposed mm. so we also condense their program a bit more mm. so they do a 10 a 10 10 week program mm. uh, but it's a bit more condensed mm. with a lot of activities that they have to do mm. so that they can match up to the requirements of the program so they can they can graduate mm. so we believe these people have gone through edu- they have got an extra education mm. or they're going through uh, like uh, 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 some other training mm. programs mm. that can complement what mm. that we what we are trying to train them mm. so collectively we have around 372 oh wow within those two programs wow and we also have another program called Kyoto mm. Kyoto is basically nest mm. and the idea is to for us to work with kids who are the, like adolescent youth uh, kids mm. uh, and, and to give them these experiences of leadership early on mm. so that they then they can end up becoming leaders in the future or they can look for programs mm. that can build them further mm. so we want to give them like these experiences at that early age mm. and because we feel like at the, between the ages of 10 and 13 it's where a lot of people decide how they want to mm. see their lives mm. so we want to give them those experiences of that early age and in that program we have 1700 kids 1700 yeah that have been trained oh wow yeah wow <laughs> so, wow so you start early yeah like with ki- typically if you look to look at the life journey of an individual yeah um from their second decade mm. 10 to around 13 yeah that is the kyoto stage the kyoto stage then around 16 to 18 no post high so after they have finished high school L- yeah which is largely that age yeah. and 19 mm. there about yeah. um that is the lead the, the, the lead, lead. Pro- yeah and then the ones who are probably as you're saying a little bit more exposed to work probably so 25, college, 25 and, above. and above yes okay yeah that's that's a whole you know a whole lifeline and with customized yes with custom so it's the same content mm. but now age just relevant. custom age yeah. relevant basically mm. Mm. yeah but comprehensive enough condensed enough to to enable the ecs model model to, to run to, through to run through so yeah. they're still even for Kyoto they're still elevating they're yes they're still, still elevating they're still cultivating so even at age 10 or 12 they mm. have a vision mm. for their life mm. they already know what they want to do for their communities mm. so they have already identified a problem so for, for the 10 to for Kyoto mm. how is the recruitment strategy happening so we for Kyoto we try as much as possible to work with directly with schools in uh-huh. Madare uh-huh. and we, we have partners that we work with uh-huh. um, and the idea is to for the schools so what, what kids do is within their schools they form clubs or leadership clubs uh-huh. and then they will nominate a few people uh-huh. so they'll have training in their schools mm. quite basic life skills training mm. to see who are going to be interested mm. and then the ones who show up mm. then are picked mm. and then they go through uh, the curriculum okay yeah because you're also looking at commitment term long or yeah, year we, long no no it's year long okay it's wow. year long because it's so we're working with the schools mm. directly so it's mm. year long so mm. until they finish that grade mm. and then we we won't pick them up even yeah. if they we, they were in class 5 when we were picking them yeah. we won't pick them up again mm. until mm. maybe they join the leap program later on i am loving this and mm. i know your story has many other elements which yeah. we'll get to not yeah. just left up but mm. the fact that you have spent a lot of deliberate time and mm. effort to build um life transforming programs yeah with an approach that um you know you start them early you continue with them but also you know you don't just offer moments you offer seasons and mm. journeys yeah um and and i i know that there is a dignitas part of your story yeah. there is a different levels including madare children's mm. education yeah but um has part of what you're doing with lepta mm. lepta started off with in madare yes has that now evolved to other places is there demand and need f- 
for this kind of program, say the yeah. Leeds, Leap, um, Kyoto, yeah. for communities outside Madari. And I ask that also selfishly because I think um, I have an 11 year old son whom mm. I would imagine, and I've been having conversations with him and his mother, yeah. that I'd, um, there are many programs that, you know, I, I've connected with him, but I, him too, but I keep thinking there is also need to connect with um, like part of what my own background is. Mm. His own mother's background is, you know, very much around um, co community work, mm. but my touch points yeah. also as someone who um, would seasonally come in and 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 be be part of such a journey. Mm. It also left such a huge imprint in me, you yeah. know. And I keep thinking, yeah. start early. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, how we live and who we are may not give him that. Um, yeah. And so, I, that hence hence part of my reason of to ask: Has it transcended the Madari community into other places? Yeah. Um, and how does it look like if it has? Yeah, um, so when we started in 2010, mm. the idea was to just work primarily in Madara for 10 years. Mm. Like, not only 10 years, mm. but primarily mm. Madara for 10 years. Mm. So we can continue building mm. the program and mm. refining it and right. fine tuning it and right. doing all those right. things. So it's your test bed. It was that, yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, so mm. that was like the, the main mm. idea. Mm. And then, but then, uh, we started getting demand mm. outside Madare mm. or from people who wanted us to do these trainings every other place. Mm. That's how the Leeds program started mm. because it was out of demand. And that's mm. why it's a bit shorter. Mm. It's like 10, mm. 10 sessions mm. uh, customized specifically for different areas that mm. we might mm. go into. Mm. And so in 2018, we started a program for university students. Mm. Uh, so student leaders basically from all the universities in Nairobi. Mm. So JKU Art, KU, mm. KCA, Nairobi mm. University, USIU, mm -hmm. and Strathmore. Mm. So we did the training at uh, on Thicker Road mm. uh, for, again, the same period for 12 weeks mm. with the university students. How many of them? Um, they were around 26 mm. students, mm. and they actually came to graduate in Madari. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And then we did another one mm. the, the, the next year, mm. 2019. Mm. Um, so, the, so this are, that, that was the first leads program. This mm. was the second leads program, mm. and then that w w w one we did at uh, KCB mm. uh, again along mm. because it was also uh, for, from university students, mm. but who are sponsored by Compassion mm. yeah, in the LDP program. Mm. And then after during COVID, we also did another program, mm. but now in Madara specifically, mm. and then. In 2021, we got interest from Word of Life, mm. which is an international Christian organization mm. that does a lot of training mm. uh, to equip ministers in the church mm. and in communities, mm. basically. Mm. And so we, we got an invite to, start, to train them specifically on leadership as mm. they did all the other training. Mm. Um, so we've been training in, in uh, Ukunda, mm. Diani, mm. and in Kabete. Mm. Yeah. Which is where what what the word of life has their their, their has base their, has their base. Mm. So we've been traveling mm. at least three times every year. So we also have like three cohorts. Yes, mm. three cohorts every year. So again, condensed into like um, again ten sessions. Ten sessions. Yes. In in ten full weeks days or yeah. or yeah in 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 ten days. Or? Yes, ten days. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Yeah. Okay. It, it, should there be like a request to condense it still as 10, sh ten mm. sessions but within like a week or within like a weekend so would that be possible or that so for me i wouldn't mm. think i i, I think that, that doesn't really work yeah. because it feels like an activity yeah. because you want to, you want to be able to read um the transformation yeah that is actually happening yeah so maybe i, I can talk about skipping a few days mm. because they still need to do assignments mm. they yeah. still need to do activities mm. but if you do it within just one weekend then mm. there's no time mm. so it would just be a training program mm. like any other mm. where they do activities and then they leave at the end of the training program mm. that's why i always said we need space mm. in between mm. so we can be able to gauge if that training was effective and if they got what they were supposed yeah. to do because there's a lot of activities in between that they there. need to do yeah, mm. in between there are a lot of assignments. Some of the practical assignments look like what? Like um, create your vision board. Create your vision board, mm. do your goal setting, mm. and then decide an activity that you might want to do in mm. the community. So you have to go into the community and do research. research. Yeah. And then after you do the research, mm. then you have to come back and present your 
your yeah, 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 yeah exactly progress. whatever you got from mm. the research mm. and then we plan we do mm. design thinking around mm. that research mm. then you have to go back to the community and implement mm. um almost like a prototype makes sense and then you have to come back mm. and present the results mm. and then you you basically are told mm. like what are the next steps if mm. you are to implement it within mm. an year mm. and so you kind of have to create a plan for the whole year that is ahead mm. and then uh, even uh, the midterm plan and the long term plan mm. so we can't just do it within a squeezed uh, 3 days or 4 days i'm i'm loving this conversation a lot what yeah. are your observations then mm. when when you do that kind of like what has what have been some of the results that you are most proud of across across the tiers um when you think about the early ones the mm. you know early <clears throat> adolescents when you think about the post high mm. when you, uh, the post high school category when you think about the younger youth but also when you think about university students like are there examples you feel like yeah this guy or this this girl um you know came in there is this that has happened yeah yeah so we have several examples mm-hmm. so for example in the Kyoto program mm. um because we ask we actually ask the kids to go back to their schools mm-hmm. form teams mm-hmm. then do a community outreach Engage. program mm. a lot of them went back and they even asked their parents to join local chiefs mm. to join some of them did cleaner wow. programs some of them started basically spraying like um like those water what water paddles are mm. that were infested with mosquitoes mm. and they got resources from their community and from their parents mm. to do those things mm. some of them also started buying pads for their mm. for their classmates mm. who didn't have mm. because that was their program mm. um in the Kyoto program we have a lot of success stories mm. in the sense that someone came in to the program decided no i wanted to i didn't know what i wanted to do i came in mm. i realized i want to do something in it mm. and then of course through the process they mm. discovered exactly what they want to do in it mm. and then what we do also in 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 the lip program is we give we give them like a practicum mm. we give them like a thousand shillings so that they can actually learn ah on the job okay so they have to go out oh, they have to manage that amount exactly they have to mm. actually do something mm. give us their thousand shillings back oh so it's capital not not a grant not a grant mm. so it's like capital mm. go do it and then come these are the mm. lessons mm. these are the things you have to wow. do and then you can go back mm. now with the money that you made mm. and continue doing that continue. particular yeah. project that's really nice yeah and that's how we what we've been doing over the last 10 years mm. so some of them did very basic things like mm. they went to gikomba mm. bought clothes mm. started selling mm. or sold mm. gave us our money back and mm. then they continued with their projects mm. basically as a way of them practically learning mm. how to actually do a business mm. at 19 mm. cuz we thought if you want to do a business then what better way mm. other than actually getting the yeah. actual experience yeah. Yeah. because you have the knowledge mm. but now you need the mm. experience a thousand shillings and it's just actually managed hey, it's 10 dollars mm. it's nothing to but then it's a lot change. in terms of helping someone yeah. get something yeah yeah oh wow yeah and uh-huh. and uh, so um so some of them some w- went into it uh, and they made a lot of money uh, some had a, so, someone had a solution they realized that uh, the Nairobi CBD like Zuko and Safari are not doing a lot of mm. installations in the CBD mm-hmm. so they actually decided no actually this building doesn't have internet how, how can we install internet and spread into these shops wow. buy from Safari com and that guy really made a lot of money mm. and still does up until today mm. and he just joined in 2015 mm. and two years later he was doing a wedding mm. he bought his first car that's really and nice. life and life has continued mm. we have people who have joined politics mm. as a result because they came in and saying no i want to do something mm. for my community mm. i'm i'm interested in solving this problem maybe it's education mm. or different kinds of things and they realize that the only way for them to solve that problem mm. according to their strengths mm. and interest is mm. through policy making mm. so they decided no we don't want i don't want to start an organization i want to join active mm. politics so that i can advocate better for my community mm. um so we have that those kinds of people who are in different kinds of industries and fields mm. doing different kinds of things so mm. people who are running uh who who have pharmacies mm. people who are doing law currently mm. um so and they are spread in different kinds of sectors because mm. again that was our interest mm. how do we influence the whole 
yeah. society, not mm. just one aspect of the society. Mm. So it's, mm. not, it's not just education, mm. it's not just uh, politics, it's not just uh, spirituality, mm. it's everything. Mm. That's why we have 10 that mm. come in every single time mm. for training. So mm. they can all go back to this amazing, amazing model. I, 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 I hope the world is watching and listening to this because it's real solutions with real. I mean, it's it's not complicated. Yeah, it, it it's not. It's not complicated yet. Mm. I think we over we, within the development field we overcomplicate these things. Yeah. And and um, I'll ask you a question. I asked one of the guests if if there is one particular thing that must be done right mm. in order to move the needle when it comes to issues around development issues around policy issues around social good what what would that be so for me i think it's moving the knowledge to practice mm. mainly because mm. a lot of people have knowledge mm. a lot of people have gone to the university they've done a lot of research mm. they've been in boardrooms mm building documents and mm. policies and all that. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do you translate all this knowledge mm. into practice? Mm. And you can't practice without working mm. with people who are actually facing these problems mm. every single day. Mm. So in a way, there has to be like a straight line mm. from this knowledge that have been acquired. Mm. It has to be tested mm. directly with the target. Mm -hmm. And then they have to be the ones who are actually implementing with the guidance, mm. either of these people yeah. or these people, Absolutely. depending on who picks up the, the mantle. mantle. But you had asked an early question about mm. if this program can be replicated. Mm. Yes, it can. Mm. Um, and what we try to do is, other than the programs in Madara, we try mm. to work with through partnerships. Mm -hmm. So like next year, we are thinking, how can we take Kyoto to other centers and other schools? Because mm. we have schools in Madara who can't really pay for a program. Mm. But there are schools who can say, we'll start a program mm. that we want to teach our kids leadership mm. and we can pay this much. Mm. So that's what we want to start uh, mm. mo modeling next mm. year and mm. see how many schools would be willing mm. to contribute partly mm. to their, the, the training so mm. that we can bring this training to and what did their, cost their, like their schools. A, a, a student. Exactly. So I'm thinking for a student to go through the whole course mm. per, per term, mm. it could be around 5,000 shillings. Okay. Yes, yeah, which will mm. go towards the, making mm. sure the that we have the material mm. and the, the facilitators who are coming mm. over to this school. Mm. So if people want us to do mm. training, especially mm. within schools like mm. uh, junior, secondary, mm. private schools, yeah, or private would, schools would, yeah. would have would have a liking towards it because yeah. there is. Um, I I I speak this from a place where I've observed something very interesting. Mm. Um, Whereas there is a lot of social good that's being targeted towards yeah. what would f fundamentally call underserved populations, yeah. where you know, like within Madare yeah. setting, and rightfully so, yeah. I think more actually needs to be done so that mm. there is even broader coverage. Mm. There is more, and what you're saying is that resources are needed yeah. because maybe these communities are not able to, like, raise what what it's needed to yeah. take for that. Yeah. There's also another challenge with with like. Um, uh, the next socioeconomic block of residents, even in a place like Nairobi, where mm. they go to their school and the things that are offered there are are sports and mm. and fancy fancy things, yeah. but there is a severe gap yeah. when it comes <coughs> to leadership development. Exactly. Actually, most of them don't, yeah. and 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 there is the 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 it is still a young person who has young person's needs mm. that they would want to you know figure out uh figure how to get elevated how to get cultivated yeah they, they would st they they require that but if it's customized for them yeah. um i think it would be a, a very amazing thing and i don't know if there's been any experience you've had like customizing this to like a group of a, a different a different look a field. different area. Yeah. So we, we actually did that mm -hmm. with a, uh, an organization called Protege Sports, yeah. mm -hmm. which is in actual current. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was quite interesting. We had mm -hmm. an experience, mm -hmm. uh, basically a demand from current, mm -hmm. where the kids really never, they don't think about problems, mm -hmm. they don't think about mm -hmm. dirt or mm -hmm. pollution or all mm -hmm. those things. But mm -hmm. we had to customize a program for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And their parents were really amazed at mm -hmm. what the kids were interested in mm -hmm. right now. Because mm. most kids from probably affluent backgrounds, their problems are quite different from kids the, from the slum. Mm. 
but then there's still something and that they see in the world exactly and how much parents would actually even pay yeah. to ensure that their kids can go to like as you're saying gikomba mm. you know if 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 there's like uh, i'm assuming i'm imagining i'm yeah. co-creating with you this yeah. that like it's a Saturday program where like those kids from Karen or neighborhoods mm. come together and you have them for half the day. Yeah. Part of how that half the day would look like is, you know, they they they, they are given that a thousand bob. They yeah. have to get to Gikomba. Most of them don't even know how to get matatus. Yeah. But it 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 should be like one of the requirements, you know, yeah. get into a matatu, figure mm. out how maybe with a guide. Yeah. Just yeah. so that, but mm. the guide is like not. You know they have to figure out themselves. Yeah. Uh, then get to Gikomba, buy the things, yeah. just walk around Gikomba alone, mm. or even stalls in Nairobi. Yeah. At least stalls in Nairobi have a plan. Yeah. Walk in Gikomba itself. <laughs> or to a market. <laughs> yeah, or to yeah. a market. Depending on where they come from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, get that whole experience, especially of on buying. a muddy day. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then come back and then go sell those things in the week. Mm. Come and repeat. Yeah. That that by itself yeah. totally transformational yeah. and it's it, it's interesting that the needs of um again the needs the connecting to problems is is, is something that uh, you know needs to be deliberately done yeah. and 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 leadership is about solution provision to exactly. problems so yeah. um yeah I, i i love that that program is is happening across the tiers again you know mm. i'm excited for it for university students as i am for you know your post high students as i am for kyoto yeah. um very amazing and so so um lepta as we as as we wind up on the lepta journey maybe mm. it won't wind up because it's it, it, it's continuing yeah. like now you, you you are doing this in 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 you know with all these partners you're doing it in mombas yeah. in 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 um in south coast you're doing it in in with kabete with word of life mm. you're doing it with like partners like the one you're speaking about yeah. uh, for karen yeah how are you doing all of this is it you who's still directing that now so i'm an i would say i'm an, an, an executive director so mm. i'm still the one who's leading the program mm-hmm. but i don't work every single day mm. in the office mm. so we have a program manager called mm-hmm. seth mm. we have a team of around 12 people mm. who are dedicated who do accounts who do different mm. systems mm who do alumni engagement mm. community development mm. uh, co- so different kinds of mm. Mm. team um, mm. who are actually just uh, present to allow us to continue mm. doing this particular impact mm. um, but I'm still the one who's in charge of de- developing the curriculum the mm. content mm. of course guiding and leading mm. the the team mm. so that they can continue working and such an amazing thing to <laughs> to even just think because yeah. it, it sounds like whether or not you are um a non executive director it mm. would still be like it's still a need to five job if 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 you choose for it to be yes 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 um and the only thing again that has prevented me from doing it mm. uh, eight to five mm. is that i never received any funding mm. and initially we were we were not doing it for profit mm. so we w- we didn't really we were not able to create that financial mm. Um, muscle, muscle mm. so that we can be able to do it full time mm. mm. but that is the dream mm. that is still the plan mm. i i still want to get to a point where lepta can continue working mm. and impacting many more lives mm. and the only thing and the only way that we can do that is by being present mm. leading guiding mm. training and mm. doing all the things that we need to do mm. yeah mm. so you you are your own and i, I will connect with with uh, madare worship uh, madare mm. will connect with the other parts of the journey yeah. but for yourself yeah you are offering a lot of leadership yes you are transferring a lot yeah um you don't obviously transfer from an empty place yes how yes. has what has been are you do you do those kind of leadership programs yourself um, is there like you know things what what fuels you <laughs> um other so, than the passion like what is it yes, that yes. how do you constantly <laughs> other than the passion yeah because i'm really passionate <laughs> yes, about this because i want to really transform my community because mm. i've seen mm. if it works for me it can work for yeah. anyone yeah um but as i said i do a lot of self mm. learning mm. like very aggressively mm. i read a lot of books mm. um i watch a lot of youtube 
like we have a lot of learning mm. learning platforms mm. Mm. that are available on mm. TED on mm. many other places mm. um I still have a lot of good friends who mm. also act mm. as mentors mm. who I, I, I I'm able to get a lot of experiences mm. and learnings from mm. and the people who I also kind of just bounce my ideas with mm. and so that we can continue building like a formidable but also relevant program mm. for the future mm. um Uh, I also joined Acumen. Mm-hmm. I realized I needed to build my networks mm-hmm. but also just get into a different space mm-hmm. so I can learn a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um and I joined that purposefully for that particular purpose because mm-hmm. I thought no, Lepta needs to grow and mm-hmm. become mm-hmm. what it needs to be mm-hmm. and I cannot just limit myself mm-hmm. to working in Madare mm-hmm. alone. Mm-hmm. So I need to start basically looking forward and looking ahead mm-hmm. and start growing a bit wider. Mm-hmm. So I've done a lot of training with Acumen. Mm. So I've learned a lot this mm. year. Acumen fellowship. Acumen fellowship. Mm. So, so I'm you're an Acumen. a fellow. With yes, I'm Acumen. an Acumen fellow. Mm. I graduated uh, last July mm. uh, from the program mm. and of course Acumen has a lot of uh, trainings mm. that are happening constantly mm. in their Acumen Academy mm-hmm. website. Mm. And anyone else can actually learn mm. different courses even mm. though they are not Acumen fellows. Mm. Yeah um but as a fellow mm. I still I have access to a lot of material mm. that is quite relevant to mm. the work that I mm. currently am doing so you're able to constantly even reinvent the program design exactly. the curriculum the is curriculum, not yeah. the curriculum someone went through a year ago if it's not the same you, and it won't be the same yeah. next year because mm. a lot of things have constantly Shifted, been yeah, yeah mm. changing mm. yeah even students who came to class 2010 if mm. they come today they'll hear mm. they they'll say they have come to a new Yeah. Uh, to a new space. So you can do a different year and you're, uh, you're like yeah I'm learning exactly. just as much. Exactly. Mm. So you a big part of your a big chunk of your your your, your work is as you develop yourself you also constantly Changing reviewing the, yeah. the, the, the the offer the offering that you also constantly making it relevant. You have exactly. a benchmark but you're like every year you have Yeah, to this is what we have to teach but then how we teach it mm. what we teach mm. the relevant ideas mm. and stories that and the case studies that mm. we are teaching with you know so just utilizing new resources that mm. are there currently for teaching. Yeah. Uh, allows us to continue remaining relevant. In the pandemic here, yeah, what yeah. how did you do training? So initially we we did um in class until mm. March. Mm-hmm. Uh, we waited very late. Mm. <laughs> because uh, it hadn't really spread as mm. much and then we took a break mm-hmm. and then we started online classes okay. in July so we just mm. broke for two mm. for two for two, two months okay yeah mm. and mm. so we we kind of just looked for money mm. to buy bundles for our students mm. in Madare all right yeah. so that they could continue mm. learning mm. and they did mm. and they still graduated that mm. year in December mm. yeah I so, feel like this so we've never had a break since yeah. we started Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it needs to be amplified what you mm. do. It needs yeah. to be amplified even more. And I hope that the success stories that we you are hearing from this and that you know as a viewer as a listener you are, like, like I I cannot um argue enough about a, a cause that is as relevant um about the next generation like this one is and I I uh yeah, I mean I I, I think it's becoming clear that it takes like 5000 Kenya shillings which is 5 USD to take one person through a program you know and one person through a, a life transformation program so that is that's a meal at java <laughs> just a single meal at java for for two it's a date that um we can op- you can opt to 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 say and you know let, let this channel let that amount be channeled into 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 something you know that that is sustainable and um and and recognable as as um as the set of offerings coming from uh, leads from leap from kyota uh, are and th- that is ecs model is um, i mean it's shifting it's life transformational mm. the, I, i don't think there's a cause i can vouch for as much <laughs> as i can vouch for this one um just because of how impactful it is i i believe but and you, the numbers are speaking from themselves 1700 370 that's over 2000 young people um who have 
whose lives and the, the course of their lives has changed by in by result of going through like a you know a, 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 a one year or a 10 week program whatever the case may be um and being being a part of that journey can be as rewarding to you as it is to them and we are all wanting to secure the future so um i hope we see this and i hope we act on it we shall put an mpesa pay bill somewhere or an account number at the bottom of this uh towards uh as this continues because i believe it's work that has its roots well 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 founded but also that has um it's been tried and tested you know and 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 as you can tell there's a lot of program evolution program um you know like program improvement every single year and um nothing is at the heart of development as 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 personal leadership and uh, self governance and this is what that offers to the next generation but this is not the only thing that that um that 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 J King has done <laughs> and, and 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 so outside of outside of lepta and how passionately as a non executive director you've been able to continue with that program what what have the the other expressions been i know you talked about graphic design but that's a that's a hassle for you know Im- improving improving economic well-being not just for yourself but mostly even for the work that you're doing yeah what are what have the other things been i know at the beginning we <coughs> mentioned that you're an executive director of madare um children's yeah program and yeah. education and and um but also any other thing and how did all those come to to be uh okay so i've been involved with many different things mm. um for all those years mm-hmm. again the the all have added into my experience mm. into my knowledge into into the expertise that i have currently mm. um so as part of the institute of economic affairs um programs early on mm. when i was still very young mm. that was really good exposure mm. and i am happy that i was also uh in representing mm. the whole country at the mm. last mm. mile of basically developing uh the youth the fact book the kenya youth scenarios fact book mm, mm. Yeah, yeah the youth guide mm. um very we, interesting because um one of our previous guests uh, dr katindi cv yeah um was 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 the lead for that yeah she, was the lead for yeah, that she's yeah. made mention of of yeah. that and on the view and we were sure that we can relate it in this link here yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so mm. I was part of that quite early on mm. and Later on I I was also part of a think tank mm. for Ashoka mm. uh, in 2011 2012 mm-hmm. when they were uh, bringing their youth venture program into mm. East Africa mm. it was a new program that was geared towards helping young people of course get the change making ideals that Ashoka and Ashoka fellow should have mm-hmm. so they can make the world a better place mm. so I was part of the think tank at that particular time but mm. as Lepta we also implemented part of it mm. into our programming mm. but I was also part of Ashoka for quite a while mm. I helped them do the strategic plan mm. for the youth years program mm-hmm. which is what the youth venture is, is all about mm. uh, I was also involved in the founding mm. of Dignitas project mm. I actually gave them space in my office <laughs> <laughs> actually that's true yes I gave them space when they were mm. starting in my office they mm. used to cook with my stove mm. <laughs> uh, their lunch and dinners mm. and I was part of the team that did the needs assessment mm. uh uh research mm. at the very beginning mm. and also I was the, pa- the person who was doing the coding mm. of the from the research mm. so basically mm. just making sense mm. out of the mm. of the questionnaires mm. and all the data that mm. had been mm. captured mm. and of course I didn't continue working with mm. them because mm. I was very busy with Lepta mm. um but also nominated one of my students mm. to start working immediately mm. with Dignitas called Lucy Wambua mm. Um mm. so he was their first employee mm. at that time and then the second employee also was a student mm. among us at 22 with Lucy mm. called Rose Kabuli mm. who continued working with Dignitas mm. and then we have very many other students who mm. continued working mm. with the Dignitas from mm. uh Gloria mm. to Francis mm. Gisharu who's mm. currently working with mm. Dignitas there was mm. Meshak mm. at some point who was working with Dignitas all mm. of these are basically That's Vincent there's Vincent Masharia mm. mm. from our 2022 class mm. but also from our RF mm. at Kenya Factory School of Arts program mm. 
So we've basically nominated almost seven or eight mm, okay. individuals that have been there. Uh, mm. to work at Dignitas because of their values, because of the skills mm. inherent in them mm. and present through training from mm. us. Mm. And they've done a good job mm. uh, from all the feedback I've received. Mm. And from the fact that they keep on asking for more from mm. us. Mm. And we have recommended people to different places, mm. basically, as pharmacists, mm. different mm. kinds of things mm. uh, into many different spaces. Mm. Um, in 20, in 20, I'll say 20, 20, 2017, mm -hmm. I was invited to be a part of Mother and Children's Education mm -hmm. as a board member mm -hmm. initially mm -hmm. uh, because of the work that I do in Mother. Because mm -hmm. there was a program that they were running mm -hmm. uh, that was supported by ABC Children's Aid in Iceland. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of failing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really failing. It was. Is ABC an acronym or? No, it's ABC is just A B C okay. from 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 the, from the, the letters. letters. Yes, because mm. that's what you start learning mm. in school, mm. and their focus is basically education. Mm. Um, so the, that program was failing. So they mm. invited us and me myself as a as a board member, mm. and I was made a secretary, mm. and I was the youngest in that board. Everyone mm. else is. Mm. It's a bit old, mm. aged, mm. wise. Mm. <laughs> so I felt out of place, but also in place in terms of what I was bringing mm. to the table. Mm. And we were trying to recruit a CEO mm. for that particular program mm. at that particular time, but mm. all the CEOs kept on running away from the mess mm. because they thought they wouldn't really manage to do the work that mm. needs to be done mm. to clean up the organization. Mm. And so at the end, they, they asked if I could help them mm. uh, during that first year, mm. tra that transition year. Mm. And of course, I had to talk to my wife mm. because I was about to sacrifice mm. the income that was growing mm. in, in my graphic design business mm. also mm. to continue doing work in Madare. But it was a bit easier for me mm. because I've always had a passion and a strong inclination mm. towards doing whatever I can to make Madare better. Mm and make sure that children and people in Madare get the services mm. they need, mm. but also just the love mm. that, they, that they deserve mm. to have. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I joined the program. Mm. And I said, yes, I'll do this mm. for one year only, mm. because mm -hmm. I still have to go back to mm. the things I need to do. Mm. Um, and then they were okay, they were happy, because they were, now they could mm. start mm. and do the transition. Mm. And so that's what I currently mm. do. That's why I'm not a, 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 an executive director at Lepta because yeah. I that's my my eight to five. Mm. So it's almost like I work for seven days a week for <laughs> because of the kind of work mm. that I have to do. And what is their kind of work? Um, so Mother Children's Education offers different kinds of things. Mm. So our main goal is education, mm. but education comes in different shapes and packages for different kinds of kids depending on what is it that they need. Mm. So um, when I joined MC, it was a children's home, mm -hmm. but also a school. Mm. Okay. Um, so it, it was housed in the same mm. particular property in Mother and North mm. uh, area, area three. Mm. Um, and so one of the things I said is I will never run a children's home. Mm. I'll never run a school personally, because I don't think I have the skill sets mm. to do those two mm. things. Mm. But I have a skill set mm. of creating a program that actually mm. works mm. for the people that work mm. or are supposed to be beneficiaries. Mm. And I sold that vision to mm. my board members. Mm. Fortunately, that same year, mm. the government had said they're not going to register any more children's mm. homes. That's Kenya government. Yes, the Kenyan mm. government. Mm. Yeah, so they stopped and they mm. haven't really resumed. Mm. They're, so they're still not registering new children's homes. Mm. So one of the things I said is I have to convert this into a program that actually works. Because mm. I see I see the danger of keeping kids in the same space mm. where they are learning, they are eating, they are spending, mm. but also in, it's not very conducive in terms mm. of the investment that they are actually receiving. Mm. And so the first thing I did was remove the, 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 the schooling system mm. and make sure that all the kids can go back to schools. Mm. They can go to different schools mm. that offer actual quality uh, education and services mm. uh, for the kids. Mm. Um, so they started going to, so the high schoolers went to public schools, so public secondary schools and the primary going students went to private schools within the mm. locality. Mm. So they could interact with other kids mm -hmm. and stop having that kind of mentality that mm. they are kind of stuck and mm. they're in a box. Mm. Um, 
And then what we did with the children's home is that I started looking for the parents and guardians mm. for for the 120 kids that I found wow. uh, uh, housing, mm. ho- housed, housing being housed there. Mm. Uh, so those were those two are my priorities mm. to improve learning and mm. education mm. outcomes for them, mm. by ensuring that they have quality education. But number two is to make sure that these kids are fully reintegrated, because every kid needs the love and support, but also that feeling that there is someone else mm. who they belong to or mm. they belong with. Mm. And that's what I did. Has that been easy? I can imagine part of the mess that was there because yeah. it's because that wasn't easy. The, exactly. The mess was there because um, just running those two things wasn't easy in terms mm-hmm. of the resources that they're receiving, mm-hmm. but also the fact that people were not paid well. Uh-huh. So they used to just steal mm-hmm. as much ah. as they could. Okay. So I was actually replacing four people. Ooh. I was replacing the director, the administrator, the head teacher for primary school and the head teacher for sec- uh, wow. for secondary school. Mm. And I was supposed to do all those mm. jobs, basically. Mm. That's why I said I can't do. Mm. I can't be a head teacher. Yeah. I can't be a, a, a children's home administrator. Mm. Mm. So I can't be a program director. Mm. That's mm. what was my first title that I gave myself. Mm. I'm directing a program. Mm. So this is a program. And the program is a scholarship program. Mm. That's what I call it. Mm. It's a scholarship program. But this is how it looks. Some kids in this program need feeding mm. they need housing mm. but they don't really need to be in a home mm. confined into a home mm. they only need these things mm. when they're going through learning mm. but then they can go back to their parents when mm. learning mm. stops or it is halted and that can be daily that can be daily mm. or that can be uh, Th- timely okay. yes mm-hmm. Uh, while we were in Madara, it was different because mm. some people started just going back to... The, so some people started living with their parents almost immediately mm. and some children had to go back during holidays. It was not easy at first because mm. they weren't used to a very... because most of them were picked from the streets yeah. and some of, of them were abandoned. Mm. But the good thing is there was some level of records mm. that was available. Mm. Um, so we, what we did is, mm. with my social work, I started now looking for actual parents, calling them up, finding out where are they, mm. where do they live, we want to come, mm. we want to see them physically, mm. but we, we didn't want them to come to the center, mm. because they will never show us where they live. So mm. we told them, we have to come to your mm. home. Mm. Then when we went to the homes, it's the homes, homes are in Madaria, they are the same mm. everywhere. Mm. Um, but now the difference is what the parent does if he works, if he's a drunk, if mm. he's whatever mm. it is that mm. they do. Mm. That will now qualify the child for extra care mm. or to stay with their parents. So I had to do a lot of um, auditing. Yes. Mm. So I had to do a lot of like the, the sponsorship program itself. I had to do a lot of mm. auditing mm. so that I, I ensure that we're actually supporting the kids who are actually right in kids. need. Mm. Mm. Yeah and the kind of need that they have mm. so that they, they can benefit from the program mm. itself. Mm. And so that's what we did. Mm. So we did the reintegration. So the, the, the first two or three years, that was what we did, mm. reintegration. Uh, were you, was it 100%? Um, the last two kids, we found their, their guardians this year in okay. April. Mm. Those were the remaining two, ones. Two. Wow. Yeah, and Oof. both, it was all, almost by mistake, out of 120. My goodness. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's what we started doing like mm. focus our focus was so I, I have an old car now because it has really really <laughs> moved throughout the country mm. i have been in all almost all villages in in the country because their parents because their some of the parents had already had already related. gone back to to shags so uh, what are to, some of those yeah. stories like is it at, at what point have they moved to shags and left their children so, is it that they didn't know or they, so the kids they were, were in the streets mm-hmm. they were picked in the streets mm-hmm. they were committed from by the courts to mm-hmm. the children's home mm-hmm. eventually initially mm-hmm. so they ne- ne- never really bothered to look for their parents because the program really worked mm-hmm. where the kids are in the home mm-hmm. so as long as they're in the home mm-hmm. then things are okay mm-hmm. they don't need to look for parents mm-hmm. they don't need the parents because the parents are being blamed for not mm-hmm. being able to take care of their mm-hmm. children in the first place mm-hmm. So the parents are not even, they're not even showing up mm. uh, to find out where the kids are, what the kids it's are 120 doing. 120 of them. Yes. Mm. Um, so so that, that was the, the work basically, mm. I would say the work that I had to, mm. to do to ensure that 
first we know that these kids are parents because at the end of the day when they get to 19 they have to leave the program yeah. so where do they go mm. or do we have to start creating homes for them so I was basically preempting that particular mm-hmm. challenge that I might have in the future. In the future. Exactly. In the near future yeah. Also, are moving very fast. Exactly. Yeah. What what were what were the age ranges when you so, took over? So all the ranges. Mm-hmm. We had like three year olds in the program to twenty year olds, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. So it was kids across all age so, groups. And they're in one facility. And, and they're in so one facility. The, 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 what kind of challenges are they then dealing with when you are coming in there? Like what? So the facility wasn't conducive first because it was a school that they had converted into a home. That's so the first thing. Or... Yeah, with bank beds mm-hmm. and uh, a bad kitchen, basically. So the, the first thing I did was actually make a kitchen. Uh... <laughs> yes, and because their kitchen was wasn't safe, mm-hmm. they, we couldn't guarantee that the food would be safe mm-hmm. um, because everyone could access the kitchen. Mm-hmm. They didn't have like a proper door mm-hmm. when food is stored there or when people are cooking that. Anyone can come in. Mm-hmm. And it was next to a river, Madare River, mm-hmm. but on, on the side of Uruma. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really a nice place for the kids to grow in. Mm-hmm. Um, so after two years within the program, I started looking for a new place mm-hmm. where we could house the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and at, at this time, we have already figured out that we have all the parents for these kids other than the two. So we had to invite the parents and tell them, no, we have a new venue. It's in Roy currently, where we have housed the boarding. Mm. So we have 80 currently because of every year kids have been graduating. Mm. Yeah, and we hadn't been adding mm. uh, new kids into the boarding program. Mm. So we have 80 kids. So we, we invited their parents in 2020 when we, we planned to move, mm. just before COVID. Mm. That's when we had planned to move. So we, we invited all of them, told them, this is where we want to bring your kids. Are you comfortable? Now you know where we, we are. Uh, they were really happy. Some of them were crying tears of joy, mm. saying, "No, kids will have a nicer place to live, an environment where they are." They are they, 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 Cause in Madare, we, we were next to a slum where the kids used to just buy mm. uh, weed mm. quite easily and other drugs mm. that they used to to use. Mm. Yeah, but then we we got to Roy, such a nice place, a different environment, cleaner air, mm. no mosquitoes. <laughs> So we don't even use mosquito nets in Roy, mm. but in Madara we had to buy mosquito nets for all kids and all beds mm. because they always had many kinds of diseases. Mm. Um, I remember I used to spend almost 23,000 shillings every month mm. in just buying meds. Mm. And right now we only spend around 3,000 mm. shillings. Mm. And that's also because we have like a recurring problem that we are still taking care of. Mm. Yeah, we have a, a, a child who has sickle cell and mm. So we have to really t- keep on, g- so we are not sick anymore just by moving and to a new environment where we have clean water, the environment is nicer, better hospitals that are not overcrowded. So, um, so all these facilities that we, we didn't get before. They're still getting the education. Uh, and then the kids are going to nearby schools that are really good, they are really taking care of them and that are not victimizing them. Right. Because now they're in a hostel, they're no longer in a children's home. So they are not looked at as kids. Yeah who belong to that children. So, so so teachers are teaching them as they will teach any other kid in that so particular they, area. Like when you take them to school, what do they introduce themselves as? So they, they come from MC, that's it. They don't have to say children's home. They don't have to, so they are in a, it's not children's home. And that's what I, I struggle to, to, when I'm fundraising to not say a children's home because everyone wants to fund a children's home, but we still need funds for whatever we are doing because we are still giving them food, shelter, and all the needs that they mm. might have. Mm. It's the only difference is that when schools close, they go back to their parents. Mm. And the good thing is they're very happy to do that. Mm. Yeah, we don't have to force them. Mm. They want to go back home, mm. yeah. Your passion oozes out as you speak about your work. You know, there's a way, <laughs> there's, there's like a dedication and a, and an, um, a vibrancy that mm. that you cannot you cannot d- d- dissolve from 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 you know from a place of inside and I think you, the, the job that you are doing you are doing with um, MCE is Matare um, Children's Education is absolutely transform- transformational. You've changed systems. 
you have caused something to work different that wasn't you know result into the kind of um, the kind of desired change that mm. that that, that um, you know was a miss before and and um, and uh, as you're saying you've traveled around the country trying to locate parents trying to ensure that there is a rehab not rehabilitation what do you call it reintegration, reintegration <coughs> happening back to the families which is part of the success so what for for that for this kind of program what what are your indicators when do you know you're successful what does success look like so for me for the first five years mm -hmm. <coughs> which which i've just finished mm. was one to make sure that every child mm. besides they don't just say i'm their dad mm. and i'm their mom mm. or i'm their parent mm. i want them to know that i'm their big brother mm. but they have relatives they have families and they can be able to go back to them mm. and know that they are loved. And one of the things I've been doing is I've been doing a parents' uh, trainings mm. uh, almost every single year since I joined. Mm. And the idea is to help parents also reintegrate back to their children, mm. to learn how to love them again, mm. to learn how to take care of them again, mm. to learn how to read clues or just read body language mm. because kids are still growing and are developing. Mm. So that was one of the things I wanted mm. to do. Reintegration is twofold. It's preparing the children to like be back in the into, right environment, but also the parents, the parents to also be able to learn how to take care of mm, them. Mm. Because again, that is the best um, condition that we want to set for for our communities. The their families are are mm. are complete. Mm. The families can thrive. Mm. That's really really important mm. for our programs. That was one of the things I had set mm. out to do. Mm. And the second thing was to build systems. Sorry, and the 120 kids are now family integrated. Fully. Mm. So total, we support 200 kids, mm. but over the, so almost 60, 60 of them have graduated, graduated. over the last five mm. years. So mm. it was 260. Mm. But now, so it's 200 currently. Mm. And 120 of them now live mm. fully with their parents. Mm. So they're in a scholarship program fully where we just pay school fees mm. and take care of their needs mm. while, they're while they're with their school. parents. While they're with their parents? Yeah, in schools. Okay. So they go to schools where their parents recommend, mm. but are quality schools, so we have to monitor that. Yeah. And then 80 live with us mm. while they're going through okay. learning and education, okay. but they have right. to go back mm. home. Like right now, all of them were at home for Christmas. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and the good thing is they were happy to be at home yeah. with their parents. Yeah. And their parents are happy to come to, and pick their kids with them. Yeah. and spend time with them over That's... the period. And then they'll send them to us mm. in January 2023. Mm. Yeah. And the second one is systems. And the second one is systems, to mm. build systems. Because, mm. yes, um, if there are no systems, then things can't really work. So you have to do a, a proper accounting and auditing so that you can continue growing and learning. Mm what you are not doing right or what you are doing wrong. Mm. And then you have to also be able to have a very good HR policy because mm. I, I have uh, 14 employees mm. and two consultants that we work with. Mm. And I have to ensure that even though we are not paying them a lot, mm. they have like a good work satisfaction. Mm. They can't complain about mm. what you are doing or what mm. you are not doing, mm. but they can also continue growing mm. within the organization. Mm. Um, and even one of the success stories that during COVID, they were all taken care of mm. the whole time mm. that they were at home, which is the, the over employees. seven months, the mm. employees, mm. which was really, really nice, mm. even from our funders mm. to do that. Mm. Um, but also there was a lot of uh, championing for that to actually happen. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because we always knew COVID will come, but we will come, but it will mm. also go. Mm. So we have to sure. continue mm. and we need to also make sure that our staff are motivated to mm. come back. Not a lot of organizations were wow. successful to do that in, in doing that. Yeah. They, they, a lot of people lost quite a number of, you know, um, their jobs. labor force. Yeah. yeah. And uh, quite a lot of organizations, mm. a lot of funders weren't able to sustain that or yeah. wanted that whatever would have been staff salary mm. money to go into like a Something direct else. program for. Yeah for COVID response. So very yeah. good to hear that yeah, um, yeah. your own did, did that for... COVID. Yeah, we were very successful in championing mm. for it and making it happen. Mm. And there was really good satisfaction mm. among us mm. uh, mm. staff. So we had all of them come back. What? And the other thing mm. was even during COVID, all the children came back after mm. COVID. Mm. Uh, so, so that was really something else. Mm. And the reason why we, that happened is I also asked all the employees, we divided among us, the 17 of us, mm. 
to amongst the 200 kids and we said we, said we have to physically visit these kids mm. every single month mm. to make sure that they're doing the right thing mm. they're in school they are reading mm. the parents are taking care of them mm. so they kind of just keep on uh, being reminded that we are here mm. we are looking at you and we are waiting we want you back mm. when the uh, this uh, pandemic ends or mm. they can be able to go back to school mm. so we were able to do that also what are the challenges in resuscitating an organization <laughs> so to, to so to speak because I'm, I'm i'm saying resuscitating it because I, of the words used at the beginning yeah you are called because this was dying yeah yeah so what have your challenges looked like so number one i would say interference mm. by people by forces who don't want new change mm. or real change or the forces who want to actually kill it mm. for some other benefit so that, that's a challenge I, that I we actually faced. Why would someone want to kill a, a so, so they want to kill it is... so that they can start their own and get the funding. Ah, some of them ah. want to do that. Some of them are just jealous that they oh. don't have the same opportunities. Oh. Um, like local government in that area where we were, they, they used to get paid mm. um, by these people. So mm. when ah. this new thing is happening and they're not really getting any mm. pay, they kind of just keep on harassing and threatening mm. you that mm. they're going to come and close down your mm. program because it doesn't meet mm. A, B, C, or D. Mm. I'm telling them, no, no, I just came. Mm. I don't know about A, B, C, or D, but I'm planning to, mm. to work on it and mm. change it and make it work. Mm. So they weren't really giving me any time. Mm. And then there was a lot of influence from internal, external forces mm. and parents who also are being paid so that they can hush, hush, eat with the staff members. Uh, without complaints wow. and they used to like use the students some of the students to cause strikes and all that and that happened like two or three times and what I did was quite interesting in the sense that you know I'm from Madari mm. and I know when people are acting up when it's genuine and when it's not when it's genuine I used to call them for meetings directly tell no come tell me what you want and what you think should be the solution and how we can work towards a solution together. And then when it's just influence and, and uh, bad influence from other people, I didn't really even think about it. I didn't even bother. Just come into the office, lock myself in, start continue, and continue basically building the policies that I need for the mm. future. Mm. And then they knew that I had ignored them and then that kind of fizzled. <laughs> fizzled out mm. so i was kind of resilient i gangster. would say i was exactly mm. acted gangster mm. they told them you know i'm from other you can't do anything to mm. me mm. Uh, nothing uh, mm. nothing faces me yeah i, I know many things mm. and i've seen many things and mm. yeah i i know how to deal with whatever needs that's really interesting show up yeah so the a lot of what you've also been doing in terms of personal development mm. and your own leadership and management yeah comes now to being tested directly directly yeah. within this because uh, you're resuscitating this organization there are all these forces internal external yeah. um there's covid happening within that same period yeah like if if, if one person could be tested <laughs> i was tested you were tested for yes this. Yeah. i was tested and i i wouldn't say I just relied on my own wit and mm. Mm. and creativity but mm. i always try to work mm. with my staff members mm. and make them also the stars mm. by helping by working with them to mm. come up with solutions, with solutions yeah. of course with my guidance but mm. i still want them to shine mm. and know that they are, they are actually inf influencing and implementing ideas that mm. ca have come out of mm. and mm. from them mm. so so i ensure that my staff members are happy mm. motivated mm. and willing Mm. and engaged mm. also in mm. actually mm. coming mm. up with solutions and yeah. helping out so and the system also helped because if there's a system then it becomes a bit easier to manage different things mm. Mm. so our work is a bit decentralized mm. at mc mm. so if i was to leave for a month things will still work mm. yeah i ensure that we have a very good balance mm. That's why I'm able to do all these things mm. that I'm doing mm. because mm. I rely a lot mm. on systems mm. and just making sure that the systems work mm. and improving them mm. and giving them like that human touch and mm. human face. So you become more of the, uh, the, 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 the donor relationship person in the process as well. So ensuring that the donor is happy, 
but not you're not covering anything there is no white washing no, no no i'm not white washing anything yeah because the donor mm. what i do also is that i i allow the donor to sit down with the staff directly mm. and sit down with the children directly mm. yeah mm. when whenever they come mm. they have those moments yeah so that they do, they don't just feel like i'm just selling them yeah my own things exactly so they get information from mm. from the source directly mm. Mm. there's a problem i ask the donor to actually ask them questions mm. Mm. i I'm, i might mm. live or might be there mm. it depends with mm. what they feel like mm. is wrong or right mm. but mm. fortunately we have had very little mm. in terms of uh, conflicts mm. over the last three years that's very good yeah because again what we do is you have to create a system where you deal with issues when they arise when they arise yes not when they mm. have bubbled up first, uh, yeah. the, uh, for a while yeah so what I, that, that's the same thing i do with students mm. i preempt those issues mm. like at the beginning of the time i'll sit down with them and ask them what do you pro- project are your needs for this school term mm. what could be the possible issues what can be the possible solutions because mm. i'm also building leaders even mm. with the students mm. and i'm helping them see mm. problem solving quite mm. directly mm. as something that they can actually do mm. on their own so even when they have conflicts among among themselves mm. no no staff interferes with those mm. conflicts because they, they solve them themselves mm. yeah why hasn't your story been told more <laughs> uh, i feel like the, mm. the the level of i mean i was as as astounded with the work that you've been doing at um at lepta mm. but also this is this is amazing and also you have the the thing about this which a lot of leaders um are not very successful in is you almost a unicorn a unicorn in the sense you are able to do internal systems strengthening mm. yeah. but also externally deal with the community so with, with with the internal systems and which are you know um appropriate and i i, I heard you say you're working with like a consultant here there etc but you are able to focus on what the needs of um uh, operationally what mm. the needs of what would make it a sustainable program, program mm. look like yeah. and a lot of that is policies its mm. structures is the practices that you have mm. within the organization and you're doing that well yeah while at the same time ensuring that the needs of the community and in this case your community is the 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 the, the students yeah and also the funders and your staff you know those are three interesting communities mm. and there could be others you know parents yeah. and guardians yeah. that that whole you know that that whole um engagement yeah. is 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 also um is also working well yeah i think there is a lot of learning that most other organizations big and mighty more resourced greater skill mm. are struggling in those in those areas and this this again i feel it is a case study you know for <laughs> for organization organizational development mm um but also community engagement yeah yeah in a in a, in a in a very real um in a very real way and um it's just impressive that what i, I mean i've sat with lots of leaders and practitioners in you know across tiers and across who are doing um like crazy large organizations the same story they tell around you know what they need to focus on at different times is exactly what you're bringing out mm. <laughs> so I'm, i'm 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 super impressed my point is you know if there's anyone looking like for case studies <laughs> of what transformation looks like organizationally mm. but also at community at impact level yeah. then then this is it the strengthening of the systems means that you know you are able to uh manage your operational costs yeah. even better yes you are talking about auditing and accounting and, yeah. and, and and finances so it means that on that level yeah. there is um there is you know there is a proper straightening but also on this other you know direct impact to the community that that's yeah. not getting lost yeah, exactly if anything mm. the the questions i the question i asked about what success would look like for you it's on both exactly that is often not one leader it is into often one leader because mm. i you know um you will find someone who is absolutely amazing with systems yeah but internally innately they cannot do 
community. Com they, they, they cannot do this other piece of work, which mm. is around community engagement, people engagement, mm. uh, you know, engaging with funders appropriately. You end up having two in one. And I've seen this um, model of leadership lately that they are calling co-CEO mm. or co-executive director. Yes. Where you bring two people, two people, two who, strengths, who provide different kinds of yeah. strengths and yeah. skill sets. Yeah. Yeah. And you're also very self-aware mm. when you said you won't be the best administrator for a school, neither will you be the best administrator for a children's home. Yeah. So let's focus on what you will be. You know, you'll be a program director yes. and you've done that. Mm. I feel you've done that remarkably well. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and, and so um, a question a lot of people in the development field ask is how do you turn passion to profit? Um, for you, one of the, when you're introducing MCE, you and and you manage you you say that you needed to manage a conversation with your wife mm. um, about you know what did that look like in mm. Um You let go of where you've probably found a hustle that's working well. Yes. Um, how do you reconcile issues of what you want to do and develop passion and profit basically? Okay. How do you reconcile that? Um, so this has been like one of the things I've been thinking about the longest, mm. even with Lepta, mm. with MC, mm. with my family. Mm. My, I have two children now. Yeah. And one of the children is joining uh, basically, mm. it's PP1. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. No, it's, really? Or what do you call it? Oh, yeah, PP1. Yeah, it's PP1. Yeah. Not, not, uh, Still yeah. very confusing, yeah. CBC, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, <Nasa. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, I'm like this year she she, she joined in 2022 mm. um and so when she jo immediately when she joined i realized i don't have enough money mm. <laughs> basically to take care of my family mm. i need more mm. but for the last five years i kind of working on mc mm. i didn't do a lot of fundraising because mm. i was focused on mm. on making sure that this organization first doesn't die mm. very simply mm. i don't want it to die mm. I want you to continue serving these children mm. and these employees who've been faithful to mm. this organization for so long. Mm. Some of them have worked at MC since 2007. Wow. Because it started after post election violence. Mm. Uh, that's when, when the need was, mm. and then that's where they started the, the organization. So I was thinking, how do I not abandon the ship, mm. but how do I still balance mm. my needs? Mm. And so that's a conversation that I'm still having mm. internally. Mm. Um, but one of the things I, I would like to put out there in terms of how where I'm at in terms of my headspace is um, it's, it's really about sacrifice mm. to, to, to a great extent mm. where you have a partner who also understands why mm. this is important, why mm. this needs to keep on going. Mm. But they also understand there is this need. Mm. But then looking at what are the timelines because we need to look at how it will happen. Mm. But again, going back to sacrifice, um, in my headspace, I'm thinking, um, if um, all these people are benefiting from the work that I'm doing, and I just go out and look for my own way of benefiting, mm. uh, it will mean either someone else has to come in mm. who doesn't have the same needs mm -hmm. as I have, mm. who might be okay with, or it might mean that I need to raise funds so I can keep on taking care of my family as mm. I take care of what I'm currently doing, mm. which is not um, an easy mm. thing to balance, mm. but I see something I have to figure out mm. and see something that I want to continue working on. So I'm really fundraising for MC. Mm. I'm really fundraising for Lepta, mm. even in my role mm. as I continue developing the content uh, because I still need to be able to take care of my family. So it's a balance that I want to continue looking at and thinking mm. but then you also want to have partners who also understand mm. what you're trying to yeah, yeah. like what's what, that long-term vision that you have and speaking of that mm. you've been able to go and represent yeah um the work you're doing especially in in um, mc yeah to the funders yes um where are they located so uh, mc is funded by icelanders mm -hmm. so the, the main organization is called abc children said which is a really small and joyous compared to many other organizations that fund education mm -hmm. around the world. Mm. It's quite small. So their capacity is also quite limited. Mm. So even though I have met them, I've spoken to them, mm. 
because mm. they also rely on individual mm. donations mm. and Iceland is a small country mm. with around 330,000 people living there that, that's that's an estate in Nairobi yes exactly mm. that's the size of Mathare mm. in terms of population Mathare mm. Valley it's mm. not the whole Mathare mm. but Mathare Valley mm. yeah, it's quite small in terms of if you think about numbers wow. number wise it's quite a small I would say village in it Kenya. Is, it is. Yeah, and 5,000 of them mm. are the ones who are funding the ABC programs ah. in seven different countries. Oh, wow. So they're in Kenya with us, they're in Uganda, mm. they're in Burkina Faso, mm. they're in Bangladesh, they're in Pakistan, in India, and in Philippines. Have you met your colleagues? Yes, I've met all of them. Oh, from those countries? Yes, we mm. had a conference in Ukraine mm. just before the war. Mm. <laughs> Where we met, mm. uh, where we met, we had uh, a conference called Open Heart Conference. Because Ukraine is one of the countries they fund mm, with another organization. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they themselves don't fund directly, uh. but there was an, another partner organization. Uh. So it was like a, a combination of two different mm. uh, South, uh, NGOs. South South Learning. Exactly. So, what was your experience like meeting the, for that one and any other that you may have gone to? So for, for MCE specifically is mm. that uh, one of the things that it's very clear is that our program is very different mm. based on where I took it. Mm. <laughs> because every other program is a school mm. where they have a boarding facility and all that. Mm. That has been running for so many years because mm. ABC started in 30 years ago. Mm. So like in Philippines, they were in Philippines 30 years ago. Mm. So it's something that has been growing over a long period of time. Mm. But what we've been doing specifically with MCEs has just been five years. Mm. But every other organization has like many other mm. donors, many other partners, and all of them have the same mm. program. Mm. So in terms of uh, needs, they are not as many as ours in terms of just running the organization. Mm. So, um, but I still don't want to really shift that particular program currently. Mm. Yeah, because mm. I still want to invest more on the children mm. and not on facilities mm. and on, yeah. on structures, mm. but those, I, st I will still need those, but mm. they, they are not like, I wouldn't put the money that I'm currently having on facility mm. and all that. Does that mean as compared to the other countries, your budget is significantly lower? Our budget is, so it's not lower, mm. it's it's higher per child, uh -huh. but lower in terms of numbers. Yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, like a school in Uganda, they have like 12, it's like three different schools, mm. 1200 population, mm. yeah. And, the, and only a few mm, are sponsored. Mm, so everyone else is paying school okay. fees in that. So mm, it kind of mm, has a sustainability it, it aspect to out. it. And yeah. it's the same in all these other schools, mm. almost all these other okay. schools that are being supported. Mm, mm. Yeah, so once we, as MC, we decided to, we decided to start a school mm. in the future, probably I'll just step back into the board. Mm. But once we decide to start a school, mm. it will mean that some kids will pay school fees mm. so that that the ones can, who can't. Uh, yeah. yeah. But now we can just run a school for 200 students who are not even in the same grade. Will it continue yeah. being called um, Madare? So we we haven't really gotten there, but mm. I would still like Madare the name mm. because Madare can be an ideal, mm. not just a location. Mm. Yeah, it's really like about that. the philosophy and mm. and it's good that we, we are the epicenter where change mm. is starting from. Because mm. one of the things that we also decided when we were the seven of us starting Lepta. One of the things we really thought about is making Madari an epicenter where mm. people can flow in to learn mm. about systems, about structures, about themselves, mm. and then move out with mm. those. Mm. Uh, and then, but the school can have a different name, but then the main organization can still be MC. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. So your your travel to. Ukraine was that kind of south to south learning from each other yeah. program reviews. Yeah, but I went to Iceland last year mm -hmm. specifically to meet with the donors, mm. to meet with partners, mm. to meet with the government mm. of Iceland mm. because they also support part of the things that we do here. Mm. And like my ticket was bought by the government of Iceland. Nice. Yeah, and I ended up meeting the president of Iceland. Photo insert. Yes, <laughs> um, and it was a little 
pleasant meeting because yeah. even the people that we went with mm. they had not like formally met mm. with their president mm. they had met with because of the small country they've seen mm. th- him somewhere here mm. and there mm. but that was the first time they were actually even them they're, yeah, they're exactly the Islanders themselves yeah, exactly mm. and it was really a nice i was actually wearing this shirt <laughs> during that particular meeting yeah <laughs> yeah and um how did that come into being Um so well I was in Iceland mm-hmm. in the office the um a lady who is the foreign affairs minister mm-hmm. came to see us mm-hmm. because of funding for different programs mm-hmm. here in in, Af- in Africa and in, mm-hmm. in other parts of the mm-hmm. uh, of the world mm-hmm. and there they, there was an opportunity to meet people who are actually implementing mm-hmm. uh the funding mm-hmm. from the, the the government and mm-hmm. so she had come in to just say hi mm-hmm. to greet us and all that and, and I was just asking her questions and I was so where is the president where does he live and all that just casually and then yeah, we actually just decided to call find out if the president is available tomorrow for a meet <laughs> yeah and he was once he heard that we are we are from Kenya <laughs> wow. yes wow he was yeah he said he would like to meet us and have tea wow. with us so we went into their state house oh, wow um it was four of us mm. so i had traveled with uh, with an alumni from the mc program who who had given a job as an mm. accountant after we had we had paid for his college fees mm. that's also another yeah. incredible story yeah yeah mm. uh, it's important to highlight mm. the work mm. itself like mm. if it's working mm. it should sell itself exactly. yeah i mm. think so so we went and uh, we had like a we thought it would be like 10 minutes for photo mm. and nothing else mm. but then we were just He we were there for like an hour wow just talking about different things about politics about the world about mm. different dynamics mm. I, invited, i invited him to come to kenya mm. do we have an ambassador for a Iceland. kenyan ambassador to iceland or an iceland ambassador to kenya no no we don't have mm. because I, icelanders have embassies only in places where they have interest in which is around fishing mm. so they have an embassy in uganda but we have like two can uh, you no, say we, we, we we don't do a lot of like uh, we don't do all... major fishing oh. as compared to, to uganda to uganda and mm. many other countries that mm. they have an like okay. a, uh, an ambassadorial mm. presence mm. in mm. yeah but we are ambassadors mm. regardless very nice uh, but we have a relationship yeah and they know we have a, they have a presence here yeah yeah That's, through through us that's an amazing you know um, yeah. room in the king's house because yeah. of not just your gift but also what you're doing the yes. remarkable work that you're doing yeah. that you didn't see coming when you were going no i know I, i i hadn't even planned yeah. just as i thought uh, if he if he lives there mm. and i'm passing yeah why not why just not? go and there is no gate mm. there is no wall mm. like in kenya but it's not easy to get there but obviously they, yeah. they made it work yeah yeah they made it work amazing it was a snow a one snowing dark day <laughs> yeah but yeah. we had tea <laughs> very nice yeah. I, i i i i am amazed yeah. i am amazed that uh, at a lot of the things you you have been and are saying and have done and mm. um still anchored to the fact that Mathare is an epicenter yes. it's a, it's an ideal yeah. I, i i really love that that Mathare mm. is an ideal you know yeah. let let the wild gal um you know g- galvanize itself towards madare to come yeah. and see to come and yeah. learn to come and pick yeah. to come and connect yeah. um and and you are a true living epistle for for that yeah um so you also recently i mean you've said you're a father of two kids you also recently um got out of the youth age bracket <laughs> i haven't really i'm still that five <laughs> Well, you I, are... I'm, I'm almost and I don't like it. I don't like the feeling. Yeah. I don't, I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it. You, you want to remain you. Uh, if I can get stuck here, I'll be so happy. You um can get stuck at, at the ideal. Yes, at the ideal yeah. age of 35 yeah. and below. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I know I have to grow. Mm. Yeah. I when you look back, how do you how do you What do you say about your life? And you just look back at the 35 years. Um If I if I look back, I'll say um so when you think about Mathare, you think mm. of this hopeless place mm. where kids are lost, 
where mm. kids are criminals where kids are into drugs where kids don't know where they're going mm. and i feel like um once you you stop looking at all those um things and you start looking inside deep inside you realize that we are important we are we are relevant we count we have gifts we have talents we have ideas we have passions that cry out to be recognized and taught and and nurtured um so i think that has happened to me um i was kind of lost or i would say just around there not knowing where i'm going and and i was able to overcome that of course through the help of god and many other factors in my life and i was able to to look to use my life as inspiration for the work i'm currently doing because i didn't have any other example i, I can't talk about that example that example because it might not be relevant to the people that i'm actually working with so i'll say i used myself as a guinea pig said no i teach these people how to make money why don't i make money so i have to make money so that it's a bit relevant so that's why i started doing graphic design because i always tell them do what you can what can you do can you film can you dance whatever you can can give you money if you package it in this way or that way or if you practice consistently or if you apply professionalism or if you show up and be uh, and be on time and be patient it will still come so that's how, what i did with my life i used myself as a guinea pig and i said i can never teach someone something that doesn't work for me if it works for me then it means it can work for them and so i'll continue doing that i'll continue being an example and a light mm. and a source and an anchor mm. for the young people in madare and many other parts of the world mm. who need inspiration about overcoming about discovering about uh, about self learning also that's really key about uh, about sacrificing and about uh, going the extra mile mm. for someone who is not your kin or someone who you're not in love with mm. but you still want to see them become better mm. yeah and have the same impact in others mm. yeah so i try i try to live a life that is true to what i try to teach mm. every single day mm. and i want to transform that into something that can continue inspiring mm. many many people yeah and it, I, and I, and, and i believe you're doing it when you look forward when you look at just another 10 years because of how rapid life changes mm. not not another 35 just another 10 years <laughs> 10 years what, what, what do you see um for yourself and for some of the things that you're involved in um so so i'm looking at when i look ahead i'm looking at sustainability mainly mm. um 206 mm. i i wrote like in a, a, a list of the things i want to achieve mm. i hadn't put any timeline mm. in that particular list mm. but uh, in that list I, i said i want to impact a thousand people mm. um directly mm. not not through proxy mm. like i want to meet them i want to train mm. them i want to do this with mm. them i want to, right now i'm talking about 372 mm. without counting the kids mm. uh the 1700 mm. So I'm on, I'm on track and the, over the last 3 years we've been training an average of 100 youth mm. like every year. So I'm on track. Mm. Um so that is something that I'm looking forward to. Mm. That's, that's amazing. Yeah because I still want to see a thousand people mm. that I will say so mm. Christ told me I need to reach mm. one more mm. but I want to reach a thousand mm. because of that multiply effect mm. um that we th- we know about. Um, so I want to to do a thousand but also want to have a sustainable program. Mm. So all the programs I will want them to be sustainable. Mm. So they have a, like a for profit aspect mm. to, to them so that they can be able to take care of themselves because mm. I also want to I believe in Africa. Mm. I believe in our potential. Mm. I believe in our impact, I believe in our ingenuity, I believe in our creativity and our resilience and I believe that if we can do a program or a project or a business we will have resources that can flow within us mm. without just depending on donors mm. yeah so mm. so that's what what i want to 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 work towards mm. to see if it's possible mm. yeah i think it is mm. 
I believe it is. Mm. So I just want to see by working on it. Amazing. Yeah. As you raise your family and yeah. as you um, continue to be a light. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. I I am absolutely honored, um, quite honestly, that you found this as a channel, as a platform worthy enough to, to share your story, yeah. uh, your developing story. Yeah. I hope in that period in five ten years we can sit back and then reflect mm. on some of the stories that we couldn't share maybe because they didn't come up yeah that that would at that time be you know very relevant as yeah. part of your background into this but also of what your life then has unfolded because i believe that you will be able to achieve not just the sustainability that you're looking for uh, not just a thousand numbers, mm. uh, but a lot more, yeah. a lot more for yourself. Mm. Um, wild, wild, ambitious, audacious, hairy goals, yeah. <laughs> and and a lot more also for your own family, mm. um, who which is an amazing family. Your wife and your two daughters. Um, so your girls also, you know, um, a, a true path. Mm. for for each of them and and a, a great legacy to build on from from you and 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 a lot more in the community and in development mm. you know um, and a lot more recognition yeah. because I believe that uh, you, that's not what you're looking for no but it will come I think it will um, it will come in amazing ways it, it's already begun you know began showing. Uh, presidents and funders are uh, acknowledging what you're doing. So, um, yeah, I acknowledge you too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jay King. Thank you. Um, I will give you an opportunity to share your last reflection. And uh, But from Development Dynamics, we look forward to a next amazing uh, season and uh, uh, other s s sets of guests. And as you complete with your final reflection, if there's anyone also whom you believe that should be, you know, able to share their story, you can mention. But I love to give the honors to my guests to be the one who closes for us the show. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Maxi, for having me for helping me articulate my story. Um, it's been a while I've been thinking about it, but uh, this is a good platform. At least I can reflect and continue learning because I think one of the things I believe in is that learning should be lifelong, but also should be intentional. You want to learn towards something or towards some place so that you can create or have impact with the learning that you are receiving so that you just don't have knowledge that you're not utilizing. Um, and I try to to spread the same information to everyone that I interact with, that I meet, that uh, self-learning is really important, number one. It's really, really important. You should continuously want and aim to grow and become what you're supposed to become because everyone has inherently a very strong um, purpose within themselves. And once they discover it, they, they want to make it come out. And the only way you can do that is by identifying what you need to grow in, identifying how you're supposed to step out, identifying who you're supposed to work with and people who you're supposed to lean on when it matters so that you can start and continue doing what you're supposed to do. I also want to encourage everyone else out there who might not be a youth, they should try as much as possible to give young people opportunities to, to tell their stories but to also be the leaders in creating their own futures because um, the future that we are going to have will be uh, driven by the young people. So they need to, to be very, very key and at the front of that particular future. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. And we are out.